I am uh, Tudor, I'm CTO at Zeta. Uh, we are a Postgres data platform. That means we run Postgres as a service. Uh, and then on top of it and around it, we do some improvements, especially around replication, um, uh, schema changes, uh, branching. We have this, this, this sort of things. Uh, and mentioning just the parts that are relevant for the talk, we use multiple uh, databases or storage engines as part of our platform, if you want. Postgres is definitely the central piece of it, our source of truth, kind of. Uh, but we also replicate data automatically to, to Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, more precisely. Uh, and we use for our file attachments functionality to use S3. And in the future, we want to use, you know, like a time series database, an in-memory database as part of our service, if you want. Um, so why I'm mentioning this uh, is because this question has been quite a lot on my mind, generally speaking. Uh, when should you use a specialized store in a particular data problem compared to a general purpose database like, like Postgres is? Um, and uh, you know this this has applies for full text search, for for analytics, for all sorts of things. But now we're talking about vectors. Why? Because you know, after ChatGPT was released, basically all database companies out there received this mandate. They need to implement vector support in the next 12 months, and companies did, and projects did. Not not all of these are like Postgres is not really a company, right? Um, uh, the databases that uh, that support extensions actually had an easier job if you want. They could use their uh, their extensions ecosystem to move faster, uh, right? Because, for example, Postgres releases are only once per year, but uh, the PG vector has many releases during a year, so it can it, it can move faster because of that reason. PG Vector is actually a project that is from April 2021, uh, but you can see there the red line is when ChatGPT was released. Definitely, the rate of commits and improvements has 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 increased a lot because of the you know the the mandate that they received, and uh, you know the. Uh, Jonathan Katz is one of the, it's part of the Postgres core team. They are actually taking it seriously. Uh, this is a blog that he posted last year. Uh, vectors are the new JSON in Postgres SQL. What that, that means, you know, there was the NoSQL wave where JSON was started to become the native format for some databases. Postgres added JSONB uh, support uh, and therefore became actually a quite good JSON database. And the same thing is happening now with vectors, right? Uh, vectors are becoming so important for a number of applications. So databases like Postgres want to support it, of course. Uh, but not only Postgres, uh, like Redis, there is Redis vector search now in memory, you know, like all the benefits of Redis and such. MongoDB, I think they don't have it in the core product, but it's part of the Atlas offering, the, the cloud offering. Uh, Elasticsearch and OpenSearch, of course, ba uh, based on Lu Lucene. Um, uh, they added it, you see, the, at least the announcement blog post was in February 2022 when they added uh, HNSW support. Um, then even, you know, like Oracle, this is like a press release because it's from Oracle. Uh, then uh, SQLite, for example, uh, there is a SQLite VEC extension, but apparently that was not super good because Turso decided to do their whole, their SQLite fork and then they implemented vector search in that as well. I'm not sure about the reasons, uh, but they must have had theirs. Um, and then finally, I thought maybe MySQL didn't add vectors as to, to prove me wrong, but actually there is a, a MySQL fork started by PlanetScale with the purpose of adding vectors. That's actually the reason for which they started the fork. Uh, I was thinking maybe MySQL wouldn't do it because they don't have extensions and not so active development and so on. But even there, it happens. Um, so pretty much any database that you might use already probably supports vector search. Uh, so the question is, you can use it. The question is, should you use it? 
uh, and why would you use a vector implementation from a general purpose databases? Um, there are some reasons. Uh, first, the knowledge that you already have. Uh, you're already running your, your, you know, your OLTP database. You know how to tune it. You know how to run it and so on. So you might just use it. Um, then operational simplicity. Uh, when you use multi different type of data stores, you have to set up replication between them. And we, we, we do that as part of our platform. So I know it's not particularly simple. There are lots of lots of issues to solve. Then you might want to use features that your your OLTP database has, like AC transactions and constraints and this kind of things that uh, vector databases usually don't have. Um, from the cost point of view, I guess this could go both ways. Uh, but adding another service to your platform does cost some money. So you know. Um, and then why not? Why wouldn't you not use a, 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 a specialized vector database? Um, and uh, it, the reason could be scale. Vector databases are very focused on this particular problem. So they usually have like a pretty good scaling story. It might be better than in the, you know, like in a, an OLTP database. Uh, cost, it, it can be because, you know, Postgres is, it was first released in 1990. It has a lot of baggage, sort of. It needs to be taken into account for every new features and such, even with the extensions framework. Uh, so a very dedicated vector DB might do things more efficiently and, and for that reason being, uh, be cheaper. That's why I was saying cost can go both ways, depends. And then features. Usually, the you know, like the newest features and such, they tend to show up first in the focus dedicated products, and then make their ways into into the general purpose databases. Um, but yeah, regardless, I wanted to say uh, to to give an example of a, of a case study that we had with one our of our customers, and to uh, to see how this applied in in, in our particular case. Um, so it was a, a RAG use case. Uh, they have had about 5 million vectors, but growing pretty quickly. Uh, and they were this uh, open AI dimensionality, so 1635, uh, which is relevant. You'll see why. Uh, and then also relevant, the vectors were split in what they call namespaces. And they had about a 1,000 of them, basically different tenants, right? It, uh, it was uh, They have their own B2B customers. Each customer got such a namespace, right? Uh, and then they did care quite a lot about the latency. They want their product to feel fast. Uh, so they had this max budget of about 200 milliseconds that we should not go further, but also the P50, they want it, you know, the, the, the faster, the better, uh, of course. Uh, also, precision was important, you know, called recall in, in the terminology, uh, but they didn't have a, a, actually a, a benchmark from their current, uh, for, from the current provider, which was a specialized vector DB. Um, they, they wanted to move away from this, uh, this from this, um, uh, vector database because it's proprietary and in, they thought it's, it cost quite a lot. It costed them around 900 per month. They felt like that, you know, could be could be less. Also, they did kind of like the idea of using Postgres or a more generic data store for storing their vectors, so because they have other data which is anyway stored in, in in Postgres. So they, for this reason, they were attracted by using SETA uh, and this idea of a, of a data platform. Um, so what we tried first is uh, using uh, open search for it as I uh, was telling you earlier we had uh, we have Postgres but we replicate the data into open search as well uh, our vector search at that time was served uh, by open search in the meantime we can do both um, uh, so we tried that first uh, this was open search 211 it was happening around in January some things has have changed since then. Um, um, and back then, you could choose in open search, you use the Lucene implementation or the KNN plugin, which is uh, using the FIES or the MSLib libraries written in, in C, C++, so they are native code, right? While the Lucene one runs on the JVM. Uh, the issue with the Lucene one is that 
at that time it was limited to 1024 one dimension, so it didn't work for the open AI uh, 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 the dimensions. Uh, so then we, we, we went for the MSLib implementation, uh, and that worked okay. The good thing about, uh, about the open search or elastic search sharding model is that it scales basically. Uh, by default, it shards by the document ID, which is not ideal, but you know, like it, 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 it will separate them. Uh, and then it builds an HNSW index or graph, set of graphs, whatever, in each shard, right? So then. Uh, it does the query in parallel on all, on all of them and then merges the results back, right? So it scales that way, that's good. Um, now the, the not so nice part, because we had to use these native KN plugins, it has to load all these graphs in memory. That's actually quite a lot of memory uh, because these vectors are can be really large, and it competes with the JVN memory. And if it if it if it if it reaches a graph that's uh, beyond what it can allocate, then a circuit breaker enters, and basically nothing works. You have to manually get out of that uh, situation and such. So it was not ideal from that point of view. Then the cost was pretty expensive because of those very large uh, graphs. You have to allocate a lot of memory. That resulted in a pretty expensive thing. From what I remember, we had to add some uh, five largish nodes. Uh, so actually, we didn't fit in the budget of $900 uh, per, per, per month. Um, so then we looked at uh, using uh, PostgreSQL and PG Vector, because our data was anyway in Postgres and such. Um, uh, building a single index with the whole thing was kind of a no-go because uh, PG Vector doesn't have this pre-filtering support. So it it can do the search by the vector and then it can do post-filtering, like filter the results. But it cannot you cannot filter by another column and then at the same time with the search. Uh, so this there is an issue for this. So hopefully it will be implemented, but it was definitely not the case then, and it's also not the case. Um, uh, however, what you can do is use partitioning in uh, in Postgres, and you can do like kind of like a table for each of those uh, namespaces, the, their tenants, their customers, uh, which means that you can have uh, then an index for each of their customers. Uh, which means all of them are going to be quite fast. If the if the tenant is small, you don't need an index. You can just go, you know, like brute force. If it's up to 10,000 vectors, if it's a large tenant, then you can use the index, and it's still going to be fast. It's as fast as it can be, basically. Um, uh, and you can, you know, you can put them all into 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 their own tables, and then create a partition table that kind of brings them all together. You can still search across all of them if you need to. Um, however, you are limited to a single machine in a, in normal Postgres. However, in Zeta, we have this notion of uh, branches, Postgres branches, which are essentially like a Postgres database, but you can have multiple on the same physical instance. So basically, what we do, we did was to have a Zeta branch for each namespace and put this on actually initially on a single machine, but there could be then as they scale, as one namespace goes very large or the number of namespaces goes very large, then they can be spread around to, mu to, to multiple. Um, and this resulted in actually like good performance because of you know the, the indices were only creating graphs when needed and exactly on the data, data of a particular customer. And that resulted in a pretty good cost. So you know we could increase quite a lot on this uh, proprietary vector database solution that that they had. Um, so as I was saying, this will has had all happened in uh, in uh, January. So let's look a little bit what has changed since then and how things have improved. And it's you know like less than six months, and you'll see quite a lot of stuff has changed. First of all, OpenAI has new models for embeddings, 
and what before they only had one dimension, uh, 1546. Now you can choose your dimension, or you know, like they can. You, they have a way to do it in a, such a way that you request an embedding size of 512, and they give you that, um, uh, or even 256. Those smaller embeddings are much easier on the database because they they use use a lot less RAM. Uh, they're just easier to work with, you know, like when it's when it's smaller. Uh, and you see the 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 score here. Basically, the quality of embeddings is actually not that much of a difference. So you can uh, you can see you can you can do 512. That's three times less. Still almost the same performance. Um, uh, then Lucene, uh, even on open search, because in Elasticsearch they had it as well already. Uh, now they can do um, a vector search on vectors up to 16,000. Uh, so that's no longer issue. We could have used the Lucene engine, which has the advantage that it can do pre-filtering. So it, as it searches, it can look at other fields because they are all stored in the same segments. So it can look at them at the same time. That's a lot more efficient if you want to filter by the namespace, for example. Uh, so, so, so that was, you know, like a a, a very good addition. Then Lucene also does uh, what is called vector quantitization. Uh, this is new in Elasticsearch 8.14 and OpenSearch 2.14. Uh, and basically, instead of using a float, which is four bytes, uh, it encodes it. Into an uh, uh, into a single byte, an int eight, right? And it does that by bucketing and and giving you just uh, just discrete numbers. Uh, this means that you have reduced the size of your vectors by a by a, a factor of four at least. And also, integers are faster to work with than than floats. So it's uh, you know like overall, it's going to be. Um, uh, uh, better, but there is of course a price to pay in in uh, in precision because you you're not using the very precise long floats. You're using integers which only have 256 possible values. Um, however, there is a kind of a trick to get that back, uh, which is to ask for simply ask for more, uh, and then re-rank them like do brute force. To re-rank them, and if you use this trick, you can actually get the same precision, but it's just faster and less memory used, and you know, like just just good. It depends on the data, so it not, doesn't always work, but in many cases it does work. Um, then PG Vector also added scalar quantization. Uh, it works a little bit different in uh, in PG Vector. They have they can use instead of four bytes floats two uh, bytes floats, half vectors. Um, and that means that they, it, again, like the disk space is improved 2x, memor memory usage is imp improved 2x, and also like the time to build the index, that's also just much faster just because of using uh, shorter, uh, shorter uh, float values. Um, uh, and uh, you see the recall, the recall is actually not that much impacted. Uh, uh, like you, you can see here, there's not there's not much uh, difference. The QPS and latency also they're not changing that much, uh, but they do do take a less RAM and less disk space. Uh, and then another uh, uh, option in PG Vector now is binary quantization, which is even more extreme idea. Of compression, basically you have these floats, you know, usually between minus one and one. Uh, and the idea is that everything that's below zero, you just set it to zero. Everything that's bigger than zero, you set it to one. And that means that per float, you compress it to a single bit, right? Uh, basically, 16 times smaller indices, or 32 times smaller indices, depending on what you're uh, uh, comparing with. And surprisingly, this still works, kind of. Uh, you have to use a different, uh, a different uh, distance logic. So you're not going to use cosine distance, but Jacquard or Hamming distance, which are supported by PG, PG vector. And of course, I mean, you know, you make something for like an index 32 times smaller, there's going to be an impact on precision. 
but you can use that re-rank uh, trick again. So without the re-rank, you can see the uh, the impact on the recall is quite big, going here from 99.9 .9 to 68.6. So you wouldn't use it like that. It would, it's just too much too much of an impact on that. Uh, However, if you do the recall, tr the re-ranking trick, and in SQL that's actually quite easy, and you see tasks for 800, uh, and then it re-ranks them and takes the top 10, if you need the top 10, uh, then actually you can claim back most of that loss, at least, uh, you know, like on this, uh, if you use 800, uh, that actually works quite good. And the index size, the memory use, everything is much, much smaller, right? Again, it doesn't work on any data set, so you'll have to try it. Uh, the test here was done on Wikipedia type of text, so text rich or whatever. Uh, but at least in some cases, this can bring, you know, very, very important performance and cost optimizations. All right, and I am basically on time. The conclusion here was your generic database can actually act as a pretty cost-effective and performant vector search database. Uh, so that's it. Mm -hmm.